This presentation is a continuation of our previous presentation on XY scatter plotting in Excel. We had four data points from an experiment on Archimedes' principle, and from that we made an XY scatter plot of tension versus volume, meaning tension was on the Y axis and volume on the X axis. The volume, remember, occurs first in Excel. Then we used quick layout number nine, and that added for us axis labels, the linear fit or trend line, and gave us an R squared value, which told us that this was a good fit, the R squared value being close to one. Recall the linear fit was characterized by a slope and intercept, and we can get these numbers separate from uh, graphically by using the Excel formulas. So there's an Excel formula for slope, you get that by finding the cell that you want to enter the formula into, in this case, E2. You start uh, formulas in Excel by using an equal sign. This will indicate that you want to do more than just type words or numbers, but you want some action, some calculation from Excel. You will use the predefined function name slope followed by parentheses. Parentheses are a standard part of functions. And you can see the hint then as you type slope in open parentheses, it gives you a hint telling you that it, it's looking for arguments, the thing, the information it needs to do its job, and it wants the y's first and then the x's. And these in Excel will be ranges. So we will enter the range of y's, b2 colon b5 for the y range, and similarly a2 colon a5 for the x range. Similarly, there is an intercept formula. So in cell E3, we are entering the formula equal, intercept, open parenthesis, and the Y values, the range B2 colon B5, followed by the X values, the range A2 colon A5. This then evaluates to the 3.06, the intercept, duplicating the value found in the displayed equation on the graph. The third value that arose when we made an trend line was the so-called R squared value, which told us if the fit was good. So we can also get this using a formula. So in cell E4, I have started to type equal RS. And here you can see that the hint will be provided for the function names as well as previously what we saw for the arguments. So in this case, we're following the hint, it's R. SQ, and then it gives a brief description afterward of what the function does, and this is the one that we want. So we've recovered the slope, intercept, and R squared value using formulas rather than just the graphing approach of adding a trend line. And we see that they all have more significant digits than was displayed on the graph. We'll talk later about how to get those more digits displayed on the graph. Before we found the function for r squared by typing equal r and then let the hints help us to find rsq, but there's another approach. So if you start typing the equal, then you can hit the fx button that you see indicated with the red arrow next to the formula bar. This brings up a dialog box, the insert function dialog box, and that it has a list of all of the functions. But in this case, I said that I know that the R squared is a statistical function. And so I selected a category, statistical category, and that limited my search. And then I looked through the list of functions and there I found RSQ. And then I will hit the OK button. So after clicking the OK on the insert function dialog box, we get the function arguments dialog box that's shown here. It gives you a place to type the known y's and the known x's, the arguments of the RSQ function. We can put our cursor in the box and simply type b2 colon b5 to get the range of known y's. Or another approach is to leave the dialog and go over to the main spreadsheet and then drag over the cells of the desired range. So drag from b2 to b5 and, and then sort of let go and then it will know that that was the range desired for the known y's. Most of what remains in this presentation is formatting the graph, changing the way it looks. So Excel made a lot of choices for us, especially when we chose that layout number nine, but we can 
take control and change the way it looks to make different choices than what it made. So always when dealing with the chart, make sure the chart is highlighted. Then you'll have the chart tools option at the top. And then under that, you will see format. We want to change the way things look, so we want the format button. And then way on the left, there is a drop down list that will pick which aspect of the graph that you would like to format. After selecting an item to be formatted, in this case, the chart area seen in the drop down list on the left hand side, we go under the drop down list and click the format selection icon button. This brings out a pane on the right hand side, giving us a number of options that we can change about the chart area. As is often the case with Excel, there's more than one way to do something. In the case of formatting the chart area, the chart area being the sort of large, large area of the entire graph, we can right click on the graph away from any other particular item and a context menu will appear. And then we can choose format, in this case, format the chart area from the list of options. So the picture shows us formatting the chart area, the large region of the graph. You can see at the top of the pane, there are three icons. We are the first, the, the paint bucket is the selected icon, and that is where we will change colors. So the I chose a solid fill of a, so a light green. I chose a solid border of with two points and then at the bottom where you can't see I chose rounded corners. There are many many choices we'll just sort of give you an idea of where these choices can be made but there are too many to show all of them. The plot area is an interior region of the chart. It is excluding the axis, the axis labels, the title and so on. A legend if I had a legend. And again I'm formatting its color and I gave it a light yellow fill and a dark green border of width 1.5 points. The next item we will format is the vertical axis. The vertical axis refers to the numbers as opposed to the vertical axis label, which refers to the words. One item we can change in the vertical axis is the minimum and maximum values shown in the plot. So originally Excel chose these automatically for us. They went from 2.6 to 3. Then I decided I wanted the origin to actually appear on the graph. So I set a minimum of zero. Then it uh, chose a new, new maximum of 3.5 automatically. But again, I could also change that if I wanted. It also adjusted the, the major and minor units from what were seen uh, in the previously. And I might want to make this change if I wanted to emphasize that there's a change, but it's a slight change. So I might want to show the full axis rather than have Excel accentuate the changes that it made, which it does automatically. Excel provided automatically horizontal grid lines, both major and minor. The minor grid lines are hard to see in this picture. We will change their visibility uh, a little later. Uh, so we can, one, delete them entirely if we wanted to, or we can change th their positioning, what values are between the major grid lines and also between the minor grid lines. I was happy with Excel's choices, so I've kept them, but just to know that this is where you would change it if you desired. We are formatting the vertical axis. But one of the properties of the vertical axis is what value of the vertical axis will we see the horizontal axis. So in the original graph given to us by Excel, it did an automatic horizontal axis crossing. And that was at the lowest value in this case of the tension zero. We can choose the maximum axis value radial button. And that puts the values, the horizontal axis, at the top of the graph rather than at the bottom of the graph. But we can also control it to be at any value. So for whatever reason, I said, what would it look like if I put it at 2.5? And that was the third choice, just again showing you all the different choices that you can make. We noted previously that the minor grid lines were hard to see. So if we wanted to make them more distinct, 
we can format them. So format the minor grid lines and then change their color. Or we can also change their thickness. Either way would make them more prominent. I made them a darker color. And so now they're more visible than they were before. Excel provided horizontal grid lines automatically, but it did not provide vertical grid lines. But if we want them, we can add them. One approach is to right click on the horizontal axis and in the context menu then arises, choose the add major grid lines option. Again, in Excel, there are multiple ways of doing things. So another way to add the vertical grid lines is to make sure that the chart is highlighted so that you'll have the chart tools option at the top. Under that, click on design. And then on the left, you will see add chart element, a drop down list. In that drop down list, you will find grid lines. And then under grid lines, you will find primary major vertical and also if you desire primary uh, minor vertical. The next item we'll look into formatting is the trend line, that blue dotted line. Originally, the trend line has the same range as the data. So it, would, it extended from x is 8.4 to x equals 33.4. But we've decided to extend that. So there is a region for that called forecast in the pane. There's a forecast region and we can forecast uh, forward or backward. Remember, we talked previously about extrapolation. So this would be sort of a visual extrapolation. So I decided I wanted to see that line at x equals 0, extended to x equals 0. And so I wanted to forecast backwards a value of 8.4. So then that would take me to x equals 0. In the beginning of this presentation, we showed how to use formulas to get the slope, intercept, and r squared values. And we saw that they were available with more decimal places than were shown on the graph. So now I'd like to show how to get those additional decimal places showing on the graph. Okay, so we are formatting the trend line label, not the trend line itself, the blue dotted line, but the trend line label, the displayed equation. So under the green column icon, the, the label options icon, uh, under the category, under, under the normal, so it's number and then category and then number again. So I'm formatting the number. There are different categories of numbers. I'm choose, and it was started off as general. Now I'm making it number. And then when I choose number, I can specify how many decimal places I want. In this case, I've chosen five. Now, when I did this, at first I found that nothing happened. And it, we saw this in the previous presentation as well, that if you edit, say, the font size of the equation, then various edits of it may not be seen. And then if you want to uh, see them, then you will sort of delete the display and re-add it, and then you will see. So I didn't see these additional decimal places until I deleted and then re-added the display. Another way to format the trend line label is to simply go in there and to enter it and to type into it. So in this case, I replaced the Y with a T to emphasize that the variable on the Y axis was tension. And similarly, I changed the X to a V for volume. 